Hello and welcome to Science Streams Connected Conversations. And uh, tonight, wonderful guest, Evil Ozzy. Uh, welcome in. Um, delighted to have you with us here tonight to talk about oh, almost everything, I guess, the, the polymath and everything that uh, you are, as well as I am. We both know so much or like to talk about a lot. I don't know how much we know, but uh, we like to talk about a lot of things. So Evil Ozzy has his own stream. Uh, you can do the command there in chat and uh, definitely check him out if you have not already. Uh, PhD candidate working with Dr. Paul Schmidt at the University of Pennsylvania, evolutionary ecologist. Uh, anything else you want to tell us about yourself? Yeah, no, I think that that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Good night, folks. That's... Yeah, like this was this was this was whole interview. <laughs> That's it. And the entire conversation was just me introducing you. Uh, no, so one of the first things I usually like to get into uh, when we're on the stream, and we already have some people in chat, which is wonderful. Thanks, Philip, for being here. That's, uh, that's cool. Um, is what exactly your research is, is in and how you ended up doing what you do? Because I personally am always curious about the backstory that comes with people. Like, what would make someone... You're like you're like you read a book on drosophila and you're like oh this is great i can't wait to study fruit flies <laughs> yeah it's that's a loaded question <laughs> it's like it's a lot it's a lot like you know when i was a kid <laughs> you know that it it, it, I, it really starts there so i i think um i i you know let me start with what i'm working on then i can uh, go into how i become the the person i'm right now in science so i uh, i'm studying the effects of um migration on the the population dynamics like which is very uh, very fundamental to evolutionary biology so in evolutionary biology we have several um evolutionary forces that are really fundamental these are one of them is mutations. So mutations are the, the reasons we have all different set of uh, features, right? Like it, like they 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 like a, a small mutation can cause a bacteria, let's say, to survive in a warmer environment than the other one. So the mu mutations mm -hmm. are one fundamental force in evolution. And then one of the fundamental forces is selection where, where mm -hmm. the the environmental factors select for or against some of these features that the organisms have and then another fundamental force is migration because populations separate and then mm -hmm. individuals from populations go from one to the other and it's it's a it's very fundamental. Um, but we also know climate change is happening, and it's changing our world in a rapid way. So I wanted to understand how the populations will respond to climate change if there is some migration, because we know. The, the the climate change is basically causing a shift in the climate in different places. And the genes that are selected for one environment now can travel from that environment to another. But that in, in that environment, there will be another population which is established. So will this migration event will increase the speed of adaptation? or what, what will be the fundamental effect. So I, I, I was really interested in this question. And that was not like an experimental work on this before. So I decided to design an experiment and do it. So that's, that's what I did for my PhD pretty much. <clears throat> so it, like creating the, this, this, this like gigantic experiment and, you know, doing it. It, it it was like it was it, it was it sounds very old. involved and yeah, from what i know of of evolution and ecology there's a lot of math um 
Oh yeah. For the population genetics piece. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. That that that's that's actually how it started. Like I was interested in the the theory, but then I got in I got into the experiments, and I loved experiments so much. So then I became an experimental evolution evolutionary ecologist, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now we can talk about climate change. We'll digress a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Now, part of the thinking is is that not, and, and maybe you can help explain this in my brain, mm -hmm. is not that the, is that like populations themselves are moving, right? And they bring their adaptations with them. Like I'm thinking of uh, the range of, you know, different populations of species are moving north, like maybe let's put, mm -hmm. you know, because they're, they're warmer, maybe like rattlesnakes, for instance, mm -hmm. might start moving more north because it's getting warmer. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, does that necessarily mean they're going to, there's going to be different adaptations or just that the existing populations will interbreed with those that are moving north and take on their adaptations? So there's I, no I new think... mutations. It's just that the population's moving. So I, I it, it's it's a really good question. So this this that that that's where things get really like involved and complicated in norm, <laughs> normally. It doesn't take long. <laughs> yeah, but but we we have to make it like easier to understand the fundamentals of the the, the like we it 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 should be simplified to something because when mm -hmm. you're creating an experiment, it's a simplified version version of what's really happening in nature. But what's happening in nature there is, as you said, if you if we if we think about the uh, northern hemisphere, the rattlesnakes are moving north. Let's mm -hmm. say we have two two different populations of rattlesnakes. They are not different species; they are of the same same species, but they are different populations, which which were local for years and they were isolated from each other. Now the the group moving moving to north might move faster than the one we, who, which is in the north already so they then there will be a secondary contact because they 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 were they were one they got, they got separated now they have a secondary contact and in during this secondary contact they they some some genes will be introduced to this new the, this established population in the north so that's where we are very interested in what's happening. <clears throat> so let's me. <clears throat> uh, are, are there any anything in chat? I cool. I, well, I, I, uh, I read and rap to... just got here. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> can Evilasi explain why evolutionarily why my mom has a boy toy that's younger than me? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I believe that's a. There, there's a lot of you know sexual selection going on and things like that. Uh, okay, and. Can you tell Velazzi that his best friend uh, Brett says hi? I, I, yeah, he says hi. <laughs> that 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 that's a uh, that, that's a joke from my stream. I don't know if you have seen that one. <laughs> so I there, think I saw a, that one. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a joke like you know, there's a lot going on with Brett Weinstein and like his comments around evolution, which are like not well taken. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's not how evolution works I, i'm not going to go into that I, like you know there, there are a lot of people talking about it and then you know we, we make these comments and brett weinstein is like the 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 words brett weinstein are banned in my chat <laughs> <laughs> well they're not banned here yet so yeah that that that, that that's that's where, where that joke came from Some someone got brett, brett okay. weinstein <laughs> Is Evolosi's uh, best friend, best BFF, or something, <laughs> and you know, come to my chat. So it's like going know. into uh, Natty Sciences, you know, chat and start talking about uh, left-handed DNA. Oh no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. Get out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the Eagle Scout said uh, at one point adaptation as well. I bet I, I like, I, I want to comment on that adaptation mm -hmm. is the end result of the, the, the forces 
of evolution. So adaptation is what happens after selection, uh, like mutations, migration, uh, gene flow, uh, and like habitat preference too, like uh, plays their roles on, on the on the population. Then the population gets either adapt like the the population will get adapted to its environment. Mm -hmm. But there there are like, it, it it gets really like yeah it, it it gets it'll be complicated. Not every time it ends up in adaptation. Sometimes it ends up in maladaptation. But it's that I like let, let's let's not go there, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey Dash, welcome in. Good to have you here tonight for our chat. All right. Um, there you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. See the shout. The uh, command works. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Good. So now, now tell me a yeah. little bit about your 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 background because I was looking at your your uh, your resume and your background story, and um, you've done some traveling. Oh. And you weren't cool. always into, you know, evolutionary uh, biology either. You, you yeah. took some you took some turns there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So like it, it starts like okay. I I'm not coming from a family who knew about PhD and all that stuff. Like that wasn't. Mm -hmm something in my family i'm the i'm the first person in my extended family to get a phd now um it is so that that's why like I, I i always wanted to be become a scientist and like i i made wrong decisions too <laughs> <laughs> so um when i was in middle school i was like you know what, what 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 am i going to do with my life and i was trying to decide on where to go what to do and i well, i kind of wanted to be like a little bit away from my family because my my dad has achieved so much by leaving mm -hmm. his family when he was very young he he left his family when he was 11 i believe wow. to 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 study he mm -hmm. went to another city with better options and that has improved his life his like understanding of the world and everything and i was really like impressed by uh, his improvements he he is the most educated person in his family so i was like okay i i need i need i maybe i should leave leave my family and learn how to live by myself so i i was like okay what's what's what are my options and at that time the military school in turkey was giving both a really good science education and mm. a plus it was giving a really good language education so i was like okay maybe i should go to military school <laughs> <laughs> because why not right uh. so i went to military, military school that wasn't the best decision of my life, but I got a really good education. Like that, hey, that's what you expected, and that's what you got. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And then I I wanted to leave, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> so um, I wanted to I wanted to leave. <laughs> oh my god! I'll hydrate. Oh. Uh, no, I, I think I think Brett is definitely read and rap. <laughs> I think that there's a Brett Weinstein bot. <laughs> uh, oh boy. <laughs> so good. Yeah. All right. Um uh, yeah, like then I was like, uh, you know, at that point, what should I do? I really want to be become a you know scientist still. That's mm -hmm. that. That's my goal. I didn't have a lot of options in military, so they were like they 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 make your choices for life themselves, and they mm -hmm. were like, okay, do you want to go to medical school? I was like, all right, let's try. <laughs> what am I going to lose? I'm already in military, I guess. <laughs> the other option is becoming a like you know officer, right? 
so I, I was like, okay, like, you know, this or that. Okay, I'm cho choosing medical school. I'm going to medical school. I, I went to medical school. But du during the medical school, I realized medical school is more about um, being a practitioner than becoming a scientist. You can become a scientist from medical school. It's like, I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's not um, impossible. It's, right. not, it's not impossible. It is possible. But it is long. And like, it is not like I, I i i thought i could do it in a in a better way like i would i would get a proper science education which i would don't be able to get from medical school that i was right about so i i left medical school and started biology oh in, by the way in europe you can go to a medical mm -hmm. uh, medical school right after high school so that's that's the other thing Mm -hmm. Like after high school, yeah. I started medical school, and after a couple of years, I I uh, left medical school, and started biology. And when I was leaving medical school, I left military too. So that 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 happened together. Uh, so yeah, that that's that's how I became a biologist. And then and then, during my time in biology, I was like, okay, I need I need more. Like I need to understand physics and math more, so I had a minor in physics. Ah, uh, okay, that's where that came from. Okay, that that's how how that happened. And I was also interested in astrobiology in the in the first years of my education. I was interested in evolutionary biology and astrobiology at the same time, and like I I was trying to find some niche to like for myself during that time, like when I was interested in, in astrobiology, but I, then I couldn't, like I, I was real, I really wanted to do something about evolution and stuff. And then I really got into the, this whole thing. And, you know, one thing after the other, I like, I, I pursued like uh, the, the, the master's program. I, and then, I, I started my mm -hmm. PhD at, in the University of Pennsylvania. So that's 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 kind of how it happened. It, it was long, and I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. A little, little side story about myself. So, you know, I'm an army brat, and so my my dad was in the military, and mm -hmm. and I knew a, a lot of military people. You know, including you know you know high rank military people because I was in in scouts, and mm -hmm. you know they're like oh. You know, you should you should go to a military school. You know, you, you should go to West Point. And I'm like, uh, and my dad was like, No, you're not going to West Point. <laughs> He's like, I served, so you don't have to. You know, <laughs> so I was forbidden from going to military school. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> so, but I could have run away from home and went to military school. But no, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't feel like I needed to do that. They were killing people in Iraq at that point. And, I didn't feel like having to deal with it. <laughs> uh, by by the way, I I <laughs> I, I love Brett, <laughs> Brett Weinstein's comments there. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad we have him uh, in, in chat. It's amazing that Brett Weinstein yep. decided to be there. Only if, if only Eric would show up too. Yeah, we have a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. <clears throat> um. Now a lot of your your research involves Drosophila. That's true. You know, and so I, I my wife was like, "Oh, who's on your chat tonight?" I'm like, "I'm like, oh, Eva Lazzi." You know, because I was watching your stream earlier in the kitchen. I'm like, he, she was like, "What does she do?" Oh, he does, uh, you know, he does evolutionary biology, uh, Drosophila. Oh, he's a fly guy. <laughs> that, that that's true. That's I'm like, true. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I guess you could. <laughs> like, so you're a fly guy. Yeah, like. Um, Lord of the Flies. Lord of the, your Lord of the Flies. Yeah. <laughs> you and your little flasks of flies that have weird colored eyes and crinkled wings and uncrinkled wings, um, that like alcohol or don't like alcohol. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other stuff we learned in uh, bio class about the Drosophila. <laughs> One thing is, I I don't have those interesting lines. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't have those interests. You have the boring flies. Like my my my, huh? my like my flies are all naturally collected. So we go out and find them in nature, and then mm -hmm. bring them to lab and separate them, so we can create, um, like, we call them isofemale lines, which means a line w which you create from a single female. So you mm -hmm. when you bring the, the flies from nature to the lab, they the 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 females have already made it with multiple males. Mm -hmm. So you bring them, you put them in separate vials, and they lay their eggs. So you have a like kind of an inbred population, a like inbred group of flies, inbred line of flies that that mm -hmm. has a single mother and multiple fathers. So multiple mm -hmm. Y chromosomes, but a single mitochondrial DNA. Right. That's all to say. Then you would have a single mitochondrial, so you can tell the one line from another line yeah and then we use those and it since they have multiple uh like multiple fathers they have enough variation in the in the line that it can survive for several generations maybe sometimes mm -hmm. like you know multiple generations and it really is helpful to use them because let's say i'm i've i i worked with big populations but i we create like very large populations and then mm -hmm. use those large populations to do experiments when i'm creating the population i can say oh I, you know i'm using 50 lines here and this is the amount of variation i expect in my population and that should be very comparable to the natural population and that's that's how we control the genetic background of what we are doing so when we do the experiments we know our expectations and we can use those populations for like some other genetic screenings and stuff so it, it mm -hmm. like it, they're, they're they're not they're not like the uh you know the typical uh, the eye, eye color mutant mutation ones stuff. yeah but but when we go to collect flies from maine and bring them to lab there is a higher likelihood that we could find white eye mutations. That's very interesting. It happens all the time. Why would that be? I don't know. I don't know. Like main flies have higher chance of getting like that. That's there just could be a larger population chance. of white. It could just, yeah, it could just be by chance. They just have to have more white eyes up there for whatever reason. Yeah. For no or, reason, or, or or maybe like it was the it was the the, the uh, flies we collected so far that 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 you know once in a while they showed white eye mutations. Yeah. Oh, we got a question for you. Go for it. Oh, mm -hmm. what do you got? I got some questions too, but we'll go with yours first if you get it out there. Because I have some research questions. That I'm curious to hear the answer because it's uh, different labs work different ways as long well as different people. So, oh, what? Woof. Uh, Brent Weinstein wrote a, an essay in the chat. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start uh, limiting the number of characters. <laughs> oh, Eric is busy pushing his revolutionary unpublished unifying theory of physics. <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Wonderful. Now now my question is, hmm. and we'll get to Phillips too, is how much of like the the work do you do or do you have other people in lab do? So like you're going out and collecting. Do you also, you know, run the gels and do the genetics work too? Is it like top down you do all the research or do you divvy it up in a team and they take different pieces of it so the, the, like i worked with a lot of people like it's not it's not possible to create everything by myself right but overall i did almost like maybe 70 percent of the work myself mm -hmm. and you, you like, know all the parts then so you've done each of the pieces yourself um 
So, you know, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like if you're the manager of McDonald's, mm -hmm. you've, you've worked the fry machine, you've worked the cashier, you've worked the drive through you've worked the burgers, you know how the ship is that, run. Yeah, that, that, that like, I, I, I kind of did like all, a lot of work my, by myself, but mm -hmm. then like without that, like, you know, I, I, I said 70% of the work myself, mm -hmm. but then without the 30% of the work, it's no work. Mm -hmm. So it's like I did I did a big chunk of the work because like it's um it's not just the 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 the, the experiment itself running the experiment I think it's almost 50 50 like mm -hmm. I did ha half of the work and other people did ha the the other half mm -hmm. but then after after the experiment I did all all, all the analysis which okay, is yeah. the which is right that's the chunk. that's the big piece of it right okay that that makes sense um, yeah, and that's one of the things I try to tell my students about is the amount of that scientists, you know, aren't just that loner loner in the basement doing experiments themselves, right? It it it, it research requires a team now. Oh yeah, um, oh, yeah. like but not not just not just a team, but also like you have to outsource a lot of things. Let's mm -hmm. say the sequencing. I cannot do the sequencing myself because it requires like the, these fantastical machines that do the, the 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 sequencing for you, and those machines are run by people who know how to run those those machines, and like sometimes we outsource like other stuff too, like they they preparing the samples. Let's say right. Mm -hmm. You 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 think about okay. I have to spend this much time on preparing the samples, but I can send the, these to these people so they can prepare the samples and sequence these for me, and that 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 saves a lot of time for for you and makes everything mm -hmm. much easier. So it's like it's both teamwork, outsourcing a lot of things, and then you put all of them together, and you put your knowledge and say, oh. I did this and this and this, and I found this and this. So my result says this. It's like drawing the conclusion. It like generally falls on one person who mm -hmm. is the the who is the like manager of that project. Right, and they're the first ones in the uh, the author line when it's right. published. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get to the chat. There are some questions okay. there, and it's a good question. Um, so what exactly do you do the experiments on flies for? Like what's what, the what purpose? Okay. <clears throat> so the 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 exper like what what we did was I created populations of like first I I I had these lines and then using a hundred lines from Pennsylvania, Florida, and Maine from each of them, I created three outbreak populations which would look like a population which is collected from nature. Mm -hmm. um, when we checked the, the, the genomes we got, we, 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 we had that result. So like our populations were comparable to the populations that, that were collected from nature. Um, then uh, what I did was I basically have taken some Pennsylvania flies and a lower number of Florida flies and mix them together in a controlled way. Like these are all counted. Like I was mm -hmm. taking 375 males, 375 females for Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and 125 males, 125 females from Florida and mix them. I did the same thing between Pennsylvania and Maine. Since we were in Pennsylvania, they, they were my local populations, they in Pennsylvania. And I was bring, bringing uh, Maine and Florida as my migrants to the Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then I separated, I created two replicates of each of the, the, the mixed populations. So I, I let them lay eggs and I separated eggs into two randomly. And then I put one, one group of the eggs into a cold incubator and one group of the eggs into a warm incubator. So I created a selection pattern for those flies to compare to each other. Like, what, what if I select for cold? What if I select for warm? What will be the response? Because 
if you think about it, like you one would expect that the flies coming from Maine would help the populations to go like you know, become better adapted to cold environments. Mm-hmm. And the ones coming from Florida would help populations to adapt better to warmer environments. That part became inconclusive because both of them helped uh, populations improve in both of the environments. So, so that's that 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 was that was that was an interesting finding. That just you know, you you mm-hmm. bring Florida Florida genes into Pennsylvania, and they they become better, they they become uh, better adapted than Pennsylvania itself in a colder environment and warmer environment both. Same with the 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 the, the main. <laughs> So it's it's it it was kind of interesting to see that. And another interesting thing is that we don't we don't see the uh, population wide variation increase in these populations. Like they, they, there's no population wide uh, variation increase. Yet the the genes that that are brought help these mm-hmm. populations to do these I- I- impressive responses. That that was that was that was very interesting. So it's like hmm. that that's that's where gene interactions and all that stuff you know come into play. Do you have it have the populations go through a selective event? Like do you have them do a cold snap, and then so they, see they, what comes like, out on the other side? This this was very very mild selection. Mm-hmm. So it's like um, the the warm warm populations were held in twenty three no twenty eight degrees and during the day and 19 degrees during the night and the cold populations were 23 degrees during the day and 14 degrees during the night that's so celsius they, americans okay yeah, that was in celsius, celsius. yes yeah. <laughs> yeah, by by the way like all science <laughs> is in you know metric system <laughs> so it's like yeah I, um yeah yeah like it, 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 it that 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 was that was very mild selection pattern, and then we observed like enormous changes in just five generations. So that was like we we observed rapid adaptation to these environments, and also a like an increase in the present an increase of adaptation in the presence of migration. So that was that was very interesting. So we had some comments in the chat not really some questions we do have a question from michael welcome in good to have you here um can you tell us what factors contribute to the evolution process so the, the in 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 this case like you know i i i'm i'm like so evolution process in general that would be a big topic <laughs> it would be a book but in my case, I think that the factors contributing to this is like there, there are there are multiple genes and the, these genes interact with each other. And we don't really know how these genes selected in different environments will interact with each other when, when they are introduced to a local adapted population. So that was the key to observe those, th- 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 those responses we have observed. Um, but like, if we if we if we want to talk about evolution in general, then we, I would say like th- we have to think about five major forces. Those are like selection, migration, genetic drift, um, mutations, and habitat preference. So those were those are the five major things. But then these five major things are like not really separate from the genetics and genetics is like it, it gets very complicated because the the genes will interact with each other some of the genes will like activate other genes some of the genes will like you know deactivate the other genes that that will that that's that's another realm of research <clears throat> right i think you could also just go into those the factors that cause evolution like you need variation you need uh, a form of genetics, you need, you know, selection pressure, you know? Yeah. 
yeah your so bio like, your you know, bio they, 101 they, yeah, yeah yeah but like the 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 variation comes from the mutations we assume right. and then you know selection is the the selective force mm -hmm. and migration is the force that that's bringing alleles and genetic drift is a stochastic thing that comes from the um like imperfect i think that 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 will be the the right thing imperfect um imperfect way of like selecting individuals in the population so it's like if the population size is small since the the we we the welcome uh, raiders Oh, Natty is raiding us. Natty is raiding <laughs> us. The party of nine. You, Welcome Natty. in. <laughs> we were just getting the uh, the basics of evolution here from the uh, expert himself. Thanks for stopping so, in. Yeah. Wonderful to have you. We are chatting tonight with Evil Lazi, who I think many of you know, who probably came here on the raid. Uh, a lot of cross-pollination um, on these streams. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Who this man? <laughs> Natty forgot me. <laughs> Nat Natty just saw you on the front page of uh, of Twitter. That's and he was like, "Oh, I got to go visit this guy." Yeah, <laughs> it's on science streams right um, now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's it's all about my comments about life. I know. <laughs> Natty and I. Uh, like we, 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 we have different, different, different views of life. <laughs> different views <laughs> of life. I don't know. It seemed to have similar views though. He's micro and you're more macro. That's for sure. Uh, no, I, I, I in think some ways. Like, he, I, I have a more general uh, definition of life than he does. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what what was i saying I we're, we're talking about we're, we're finishing up talking about the things that cause evolution because michael had that oh, question yeah, yeah. uh the only yeah. question after that was um <clears throat> brett weinstein wanted to know is evolutionary psychology a legitimate field or just pseudoscience <laughs> so that, that that that's loaded so that there, there, there are that in evolutionary psychology there are a lot like there are a lot of people who are doing pseudoscience but i wouldn't dismiss the the field as this because i think that field can do a lot and there are people who are doing stuff there are people that are doing stuff very profound that like <laughs> like very, very legitimate stuff like they 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 compare like a lot of things are competitive and like mm -hmm. that I think this is this this is like when people do things that are not really scientific or scientific in the way we understand the science today, we tend to dismiss everything in the whole field, but it's not really true. It's not the representative like those people mm -hmm. do not represent whole field as, as it is. Because the problem comes from the the, the understanding of like there are these adaptationists in evolutionary biology mm -hmm. the, the the adaptationists are like you know th this is especially in the um uh, like mid like 20th century i i would say the, these adaptationists would try to explain everything mm -hmm. by right. saying oh we see that this trait so this trait might have evolved because it is really helpful in this case for something, but it doesn't have like, and they will try to explain everything they are seeing. Let's say people have like wisdom tooth because it is helpful for them to chew, I don't know, gums, but it's not true. Wisdom teeth are not really like selected for today. They are basically selected against. They have been there for a reason, maybe some sometime, but now no, not anymore. So there, there, there is that this that, like the, that adaptationist view is not really, and it, it's also you you have to create a story, which 
Like you cannot test it. That's 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 the problem. Yeah, if you can't test um, it, it's not science. Yeah, you cannot if you cannot test it, it, it's not science. That 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 that, that was the deal. And evolutionary psychologists, some of the evolutionary psychologists, tend to do that. Yeah, like a little bit too much. So Just that, the, that, the that armchair, you know, philosophizing, you know, science versus, you know, not actually yeah. being able to do it, the experiment. Um, right. Right. Michael has a good question again, um, and I think mm -hmm. this is something that, you know, we should uh, you know address. Um, is the uh, is evolution always going in a positive way like our gene will advance us to a more intelligent being no it it doesn't have to be that way so evolution it's so what is like wh what is fitter than what is a question almost impossible to answer at the mm -hmm. time because of many things like they, 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 there are too many variables there like but what what we know is let's say let's say we, we we think about a situation where people like let's say our 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 society from today on started to go in a way that they are they, we, we are consuming less animal products so less milk for everyone. We start to consume less milk starting starting today, and that's a societal decision we we have made. But that will have an evolutionary response at the end after generations, because there there are genes right now in in human society that uh, leads to lactase persistence. So la lactase is an enzyme we have when we are born. But we lose it because we don't need it after like several months, you know, when we when we stop uh, drinking our mother's milk. But lactase persistence makes it possible for a human to um, digest milk after many years. So this gene has been like getting selected for uh, for I think about like. As far as I know, around like five to ten thousand years in human populations, and it, it's it's interesting. So that 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 has been happening for for mm -hmm. in, in, during this time when we have been con consuming milk. All right, and is that good or bad? There's no. Yeah. So like it, it yeah, is what it, it is. It, it, it is what it is. It has been selected for. So like, there is no direction in evolution. It's not like hierarchical too so like there, there there's no good or bad for the environment like you know let's you know for the sake of the argument let's give environment or like the 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 uh, the nature some conscience right mm -hmm. like let's say nature knows what it is do it's doing and like understands what's it what it's doing for nature there is no distinction between oh humans are consuming milk versus humans are not consuming milk anymore so it's like it's the same you know mm -hmm. like yep. there's no good or bad yeah. for that I, I also remember i had a my uh, biology professor in college would you know asked about you know are, are like evolution advancing is like the tapeworm is very well adapted for what it does that's very right. true yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. i mean you're just a, you know nature will just you know evolution will just happen it just it is there's no direction to it are you reading uh reading rap's comment there or question let me let me read uh right. I... hello knives nine welcome in do you call these glasses i might send my younger this is i'll say my advice for that oh. reading rap is to, for kids, um, for anything when they're growing up, is to just give them as many experiences as possible, right? Um, museums are great for that. Uh, yeah. Summer camps. Uh, just get as many experiences, and then you'll, you know, hopefully kind of, you know, kind of see what kind of, you know, it's like throwing spaghetti in a wall and see what sticks, right? You're going to, you know, throw it all up against the wall 
see what interests and or not. I mean, maybe you still might be general. Like when I went to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to do biology, right? I had an interest right. in environmental science, but I was kind of like, you know what? I really don't know. But so mm -hmm. at least when you go to college, you have an idea of what field of study you're going into. Um, right. But even then, right now, it's, it's you know, so many kids are taking gap years and things like that to kind of, you know, discover what it is they really want to do before diving in. So I don't yeah, know if you have anything I, I, to add I, to that. Yeah, I, I, I think that, that, that those are like really good advices. I think, I definitely think museums are like amazing sources and local museums are even mm -hmm. better if you if you have one because then you can make some connections and you can build relationships with the people who are working in the museum then it will be it like like it gets a little bit more personal at that at that point when you have a local museum because mm -hmm. they you can visit them more often and they can teach you about different stuff so for four kids, it, it's it's in, like it's a very valuable yeah. resource. And I think especially for uh, your nieces, I know with our the state museum in Albany, uh, they work with some some local schools and they run a, a women in STEM, a girls in STEM program, um, where they you know they have different you know scientists from surrounding universities will go and uh, you know introduce different topics and experiments to to, to girls. Uh, to keep them interested in science. So look for things like that. Public library will sometimes have programs as well. Um, if you have a good local public library. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So uh, any, any, any questions did, 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 uh, I missed so far? <laughs> Creation Institute see. <laughs> oh God. So um. they, okay, that 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 that's 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 a that's a long one, right? Like the, the creationism. <laughs> that's a whole nother uh can of worms. But you you know that there's a there's a very interesting fact. The creationism in Turkey is evangelist, but Turkey is a Muslim country. Mm -hmm. that is that is that's super interesting to me but i know why because because <laughs> turkey has basically imported creationism from the u.s that's that's i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> well, well and what's also really interesting is is turkey is understood to be a more secular muslim oh, country yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Tur um, Turkey and Turkey and the U.S. has a lot of you know, like they 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 are very like the, the populations are very much alike, like mm. they 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 conservatives versus seculars, that 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 divide is there in Turkey too, and I think that's why the American version of creationism worked really well in Turkey. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. And and one other thing, we'll get on some other tangents here is um, people will ask me when it comes to like uh, anti-vaxxers and stuff, they'll be like, how can they not accept vaccines? I'm like, they don't accept evolution. And that was shown <laughs> to happen. How <laughs> we proved that how long ago? And they still haven't accepted that. You expect them to accept a vaccine? I'm like, their head is so far in the sand that you, you, <laughs> what are you going to do? Like yeah, that that there are flat earthers. <laughs> yeah, I like that about. too. You know, <laughs> uh, it, 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 that's why you can you talk about it till you're blue in the face. But you know, it, it yeah. you're not going to change the people's mind. If, you know, if if the huge number of published articles on evolution does not convince someone that it actually happens, nor the emergence of variants of the disease, COVID. You know. It, doesn't convince you there's evolution uh, you're the lost i don't know what to tell you <laughs> I, I i will make a comment about what what michael said before i i, I missed it uh, he said i went wonder if there, there there's the opposite process of evolution such as devolution i think it would still be evolution 
Because it'll still change <laughs> over time. Yeah. Like, you know, devolution would be something like regain of a lost function or like loss of a gained function. Like they, they, th those would be the things mm -hmm. uh, we could say as devolution. It's just, you know, turning back, back to its previous state. Yeah. It happens in, mm -hmm. in, in like in nature all the time. But yep. we don't call it evolution, like the evolution. We call it evolution. Right. And I, I think it's part of the misconception that evolution is goes from simple to complex. That's not the case. It, you know, it's not just simple to complex. I mean, and you and you get that misconception because people see, oh, we started off as, you know, these little microbes in the beginning of time or whatever, and then now we're complex humans. But that's so, not the case. It's a misconception. Yeah, I've done, then I have a question. What is this bacteria doing there? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's still there. <laughs> it's still there. Four billion years. And yep. it's still a bacteria. So it's not like... It, no, it, it, it is very well adapt adapted to... to whatever it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like all the, all the organisms in the, the tree of life are at the same level. Mm -hmm. Because we are living at the same time. Right. And that goes to the... Uh... If, they, 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 if, they, if they're not extinct. Like, I have to underline <laughs> right. that, I guess. <laughs> right. That goes to the misconception that evolution is a ladder versus it being a bush, which that's it actually true. is. Yeah. Right. Because that's often another misconception that it's seen that it's very linear when it's not mm -hmm. at all. No. No. It's, it's branching. Mm -hmm. I think that was the... That that's that's what 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 like Darwin's drawings gave us the most, like mm -hmm. that branching evolution idea in his drawings is really good. So that that stayed. But then we have to go into the details between, you know, um, everything there. Like I don't want to like. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, there's, that's there's a lot there. The, yeah. Let's see. There's a lot there. And there's uh, so Nad, much. Nadi asks, Nadi asks, does Erdogan believe in evolution? Nadi, no. <laughs> it, it, the answer is clear. No, <laughs> no way. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I think Brett uh, Weinstein needs to go get some more horse tranquilizer. <laughs> I don't know. I remember vaguely in my 12th grade biology lesson. It is likely that one species need to vanish to make way for a new one. Like dinosaur became extinct, it made possible for the appearance of humans. I wonder if it is true. So it's it's half true. It's mm -hmm. the other way than like it needs to vanish. Like it doesn't need to vanish. But when it vanishes, it will open a niche that another organism will fill that's how it happens like the the dinosaurs vanished because of the mass extinction like at kpg a boundary like it's a cretaceous mm -hmm. paleogene boundary and that that you know that mass extinction is like you know we say that it is mostly due to the asteroid impact but there is evidence that it's not just asteroid impact. Like there were there was mass extinction before the asteroid, but the asteroid was the the the, the final blow to everything, and then it, it, everything just collapsed. So they, they they because the shallow waters were getting lost uh, around that time, and the loss of shallow water environments affect the. Uh, land ecosystems deeply because la land is connected to the oceans because we are coming from the ocean. If you think about it, like it, all all the life is coming from the ocean. Land is connected to ocean. If you lose the ocean land connection, then it breaks a lot of uh, food chains in the land, and the land suffers more than the ocean itself. So that's that was that was happening, and then the asteroid hits. 
they, they there there are volcanic eruptions on the other side. It's it's a mess. So like nothing over 1.5 meters. It's like around five feet survived to that. Like that's that's pretty like pretty extensive. Yeah, but that opened up later the niche for uh the mammals to make their mm -hmm. appearance yeah and and mammals survived that 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 environment because they were small like and they were under under the 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 you know ground they were mostly underground they were very small so they survived that those effects be, be, because they could find you know insects and stuff to eat and like just you know make their way around without much so it was helpful for them. Yep. Hey, Constabable. Welcome hey, into Constabel. the chat. How are you doing? You're saying hi. And believe it or not, yeah, we're talking evolution. Uh, who would have thought? Uh, the asteroid theory is true. That is true. <laughs> There's a lot of evidence for that at this point. Um, yeah. So... It's, but but uh, it, the argument now is, like you were saying, how much, you know, what else was going on at the same time is what a lot mm -hmm. of scientists are getting into at the moment. Um, yeah. To what degree did it affect the extinction or or, or not? Yeah, it, um, it, it, it will, it, I think, like, the, the, the accepted view is it was the final blow to everything mm -hmm. that was happening. Yep. Unfortunately. It's amazing it's, that it's anything not, survived. Small... Honestly, it's amazing anything survived. If you think about it, how like horrific yeah. that is. It's like, oof. Um, yeah, it's it, it, it's a lot of impact there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not surprising that like the coelacanth survived. I mean, good god, it's like so far down in the ocean. But you know, right. The fact that yeah, like oh, crocodiles live through that. I mean, you know, it's very interesting. The ocean ecosystems like can survive to these kind of like major changes more easily mm -hmm. than the land ecosystems. But it's it's also understandable because the food chains in the oceans are mo way more co complex than the land, la land food chains. Though that makes everything, like if something mm -hmm. cannot eat one thing, it will eat another thing and it will survive. Just, you know, it's more dynamic mm -hmm. than the land ecosystem. Yep. And the ocean though is always is the buffer for the rest of the planet as well. We can see That's that in true. climate change as well when it comes to yeah, carbon absolutely. dioxide absorption and oxygen right. cycling, um, that, that the ocean is what can help us get, if we were mostly land, like, you know, Mars or something, then, you know, you can see what, what would happen, <laughs> right? You don't have that right. buffer. Yeah. Let's see, the human, human can prevent being extinct without advancing in technology. So to Michael, okay, for Constabable's point, that is very true, Constabable. They mm -hmm. will survive. I think I think we can trust insects too. They will survive anything. Yep. About that, it's hard to tell what will survive, what will not, to the changes that's happening. To Michael's point, I am not a, uh, like the, the, these people are called techno-optimists. Expecting everything, everything from the technology. I'm not a te techno optimist. I think, like, not just our technology, but our means has to change if we want to survive the climate change we are experiencing right now. We have to change our means of production and all that stuff. That's like you know, it, it, it it's long. I I talk about this in my channel every week. Yeah, and you're, you're talking a little bit about it today. Well, yeah, there. there's always you know mm -hmm. more to talk about around the the climate change. It, it's a, it's a huge issue, and it's a very complex issue too. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and, and I tend to having grown up in the Cold War, you know, when the it, it was a lot more likely everyone was going to die in a fiery, horrid death, you know. Yeah. Up yep. until you know eighty nine. Okay, I mean, right. so like now it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. Someone might throw uh, a nuke at someone else. I mean, that that's a much more direct death than the more indirect death we have right now. Right. Um, 
Right. But it, it is does give some perspective as far as the nuclear technology of the 20th century was, you know, I think far more imminent and probable and still is than the AI suddenly taking over the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I, 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 I think, like, we, we are not definitely out in the clear from the, the horrors of, like, the nuclear war age because there, there are still those weapons around. So they're not, they're, they're not completely gone. As, as long mm -hmm. as we have nuclear weapons around, there will be a likelihood of mm -hmm. something happening at one time. Yep. So that that being said, I like I remember I by the way, not to give a give her in a you know age, but I started primary school in nineteen ninety. And I remember even then we would do the, these these like you know like they, they would tell us, Oh, if there's a nuclear attack, you will hear this and you have to go under your desk. Mm -hmm. Okay, the desk will save me from <laughs> The nuclear bomb. Thank you. That's I was clearly eighteen. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Uh, it, uh, reading rap gave us another essay to read. Uh, everyone, take a moment and read his uh, prolific writing. Yeah, like okay, read and wrap. It's yes. so the the, the the answer to this is simple. If you don't understand something, it doesn't right. mean it doesn't <laughs> exist. Right and wrap. <laughs> <laughs> so that's <laughs> that, that that that's that that's how it is. <laughs> Yeah, you are now writing rap. Yep. <laughs> All right, time to put the character limitation on. <laughs> Yeesh. Yeah, it's hard to read, huh? No, I mean, it's not. It's not too bad. This is why yeah. we. Have, that's why they they have blogs. This thing they have blogs, and then you can like just. I mean, that that's even too long for a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> you do a tweet thread for uh, science who's not Englishers for something. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you're asking for Aaron. my cat is asking for something right now probably a treat I, <laughs> he has food actually I can go to emote only chat <laughs> <laughs> that'll learn you okay I'm eager to know more about Psycom can you introduce it to us so, Psycom is this. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You're, you're part pretty of it. Now, the interesting thing for, like, I never, I didn't know it was a thing, really, until I started, you know, doing Twitch. And, mm -hmm. um, and I was on Twitter. I'm looking for ways to reach out. And then I realized that you can actually get a degree in science communication. Oh, yeah. Right? And, yeah. you know, and I'm like, okay, this is actually, how did I not realize that this was an actual thing? I know people do it for a living, even. Yeah. And, you know, I just, it just, it just was one of those things that never like, you know, I, I, I didn't think it was psychom so much as you were an author or a publisher or, you know, a producer, you know, versus specifically, yes, this is what I do and I wanted right. to do it for a living. You know what I mean? So it, it seemed like. Yeah, you know, I, I don't I, know. And then I kind of got into it, and I, and I I was thinking about it. And I'm like, I'm like, well, am I like an outsider? Am I like allowed to do this without a bachelor's degree at least? Uh, no. Right. <laughs> so, like, by the way, welcome, Uncle Bill. Yeah, uh, welcome nice in. To see you here. Um, and I like I I want I want I want to shout out to Constable here. She <laughs> has the best quotes and tweets about this whole thing <laughs> uh, like i i don't want to like you know steal her ideas or something but i'm learning a lot from her 
But at, at, at the same time, the, 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 the problem with science, like the scientists and the, the public is scientists think that if we give the, the facts as they are, people will be like, all right, we believe in and we'll be a nice, happy family, hold hands and just walk, well, you know, walk around and dance maybe. Like that's what, <laughs> what scientists think. It doesn't happen. Like it's not just giving the facts. It's also right. creating a like trust relationship with the public. I think that that's that's how I really how I how I really got into Psycom. I was like, like I was watching news like everyone, and <laughs> I was getting crazy with what's going on. I was like, okay, there's something wrong here. People are taking this completely wrong. But why? Why do people people are taking this completely wrong? What's what's wrong here? Mm -hmm. And every time I look at scientists, it's just a like huge, huge pile of mistakes one after the other. Like you cannot communicate like that and expect people to trust you later on. You have to change something there. Like I, I was seeing that and I was like, okay. Maybe I should try. Like I, 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 I love speaking. I love talking, and I talk too much, and that's that's who I am. So I was like, okay, what, 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 what can I do? Let, then I, I, I decided that I can start a channel that I can talk to people and communicate and make one, you know, one-on-one -on -one relationships, so people can trust me as a person. That they are getting their information from. So that's how I got into the 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 whole psychom thing. That's that was my idea of like how I can build this, and also being straightforward to people is really important. Because mm -hmm. one of the one of the things I have been seeing, especially with the vaccine, like I I I got into. Uh, streaming when the vaccines were becoming a thing so that that's that i have to m m underline that too so like i i got i started streaming uh seven months ago in march Mar uh, march 1st was the first day i streamed um so when i started i i was like i was seeing these people having like issues with the vaccines and the issue was not really vaccines working or not it was more of a trust issue between people and the authorities and the the authority has like a lot of problems there like i like people extra people tend to extrapolate what they know from something to other things and that's who we are like it's not i'm not blaming people for doing that it's it's who we are we learn something and then we extrapolate it and say, okay, I know this, this is happening. So this is similar to this one. So this should give the same result. It's, it's, it's how our logic works. If I know better and if I can say, oh, this is different than this and there are these differences, so this should be working this way, then it's, it becomes another level of knowledge. But I don't expect everyone to know that much. So the, the problem with the authority and people were, were people were looking at their doctors, especially in the US. And the poor communities, the people who have been like, you know, like marginalized, the the people of color, the the immigrant communities, they have been treated really badly with the, by the doctors in the past. And when you say, Okay, you have to trust your doctor. And if they say, yeah, you tell me to trust my doctor, but that doctor was the one to prescribe me with opioids. Like, what can I say to that person in response? It's so hard to create that relationship between that person and the doctor that is built on trust. But then... There are people who are not who are not doctors, like medical doctors, but who are scientists. But since people see doctors as scientists, 
than they don't trust scientists to because they, they think scientists are part of the same system. And are they completely wrong? I don't think they are, they are completely wrong, but we have to show it's not one or the other. So that's that's where SciComm really comes into you know play. So if someone tells like I, I was seeing these these people who are telling me that, oh, you know, like you you think the vaccines are working, but the the big pharma is behind this. And I'm I can be like, look, I'm against big pharma too, because big pharma hurt people a lot. And that has a lot of reasons. That we need to fix, but th this doesn't change the the vaccines work, and that that kind of interaction builds more of a relationship that is built on trust, and those people are more likely to respond better. In the end, so that that was my experience, but that a lot of things happened. I, and I, I again yeah. talk, talked a lot. That's I, okay. I that that was a wonderful rant. That was great. But you're wanna there's some special news in the in the chat you're gonna wanna read. Uh, thank, so. By the way, thank you, Constable, for your nice comments. All right, let's see. Yep. <laughs> thank you, Read and Rap. I I there there, <laughs> there is a project going on, on Discord right now for like philosophy of science, which uh, there's an effort to build a class on philosophy of science to stream on Twitch with a, a lot of like you know streamers. So uh, it's like yeah, it, it it will be really nice. Are you part of that, Scott? Um, I I've been really busy. I saw it come across on the TKF TKF uh, Discord. Was it yesterday or two days ago? It was posted. Mm -hmm. I just haven't had a chance to. Uh, to sit down on Discord and do anything. My service at school is terrible, so I can't get on Discord, so I'm kind of stuck. By the way, Uncle Bill gave a spoiler. Wow. <laughs> I learned in your stream. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, let me see. Yeah, like Constable, uh, congrats to you too. I like, I love Constable skills. Yep. They, they, they're, they're amazing. If you want to whisper me the uh, the link to that Discord, you can do that. Because I know some of you were talking about that link. Since I know you can't do it in the chat, let's see. That'll be fine if you wanted to whisper it to me, or if someone else has it, you can get it to me some other way. Yeah. Okay. Um, On Discord Eagle or whatever. Scott, T -T -K TKF is like you. you uh, do Do you have the link, Scott, for TKF? So you can you can go there join you go. that. You you can you can find many more streamers. It's 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 an amazing platform. Beware information overload, as Uncle Bill will say. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, let's see. I do. Um, I just posted okay. it. Yep, that was one of the first commands I put in the bot. Yeah, I know. I know. Because <laughs> I know that Uncle Bill's going to show up and try typing it in at his first time. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> what? Uh, any other questions to me? From you too, Scott. Like, oh, oh I, I got a lot of questions, but uh, this is more for the the, the audience uh, as well, participation. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's funny, whenever you, you, we get together, we can always talk. It's oh, it's yeah. it, it it's it's good. <laughs> <laughs> always always good stuff. Um, and and I I think when it comes to science communication, um, and, and I know there are some other teachers in the in the chat as well um and that also the watch that don't necessarily chat that you know from littlest kid all the way up through higher ed you know the science education piece of science communication is so important and you know when, when stuff goes bad 
um, where it's obvious misunderstandings about science. You know, I, I, I feel added pressure as a science teacher um, that, you know, I always, and this is why I work so hard, I guess, is that I feel somehow responsible. And I'm like, I need to work harder to make sure that, you know, misconceptions don't stay out there. And, you know, we, we answer questions about science. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I, I started having guests on and talking to scientists, because I realized as a science teacher, I didn't actually know that many scientists, right? That, that, that's, you know, that's I'm not, really true, right? and I'm not in a lab, you know, I, I do labs, but you know, I don't publish, I don't know what's going on. You know, it, it's been a while. Right. So, you know, I, I feel it's important for educators to, to be out there. And I left while like going to some of a lot of the, the streamers that are actual scientists to see you know, what they talk about and uh, have that as part of my, uh, you know, my content learning about my mm -hmm. practice. Um, yeah. And, and so it all kind of feeds. It's good for me. It's good for people that come to your stream, that come to my stream, that go on TKF, and we can all help, you know, promote that science communication through education. You're right. Misconceptions about misconceptions. Yeah, there are those two. <laughs> right there's the most popular person on the stream right there all of a sudden we have like 20 more viewers uh just because a cat showed up <laughs> yeah yep all right you want to go you go all right. but science um, is constantly yeah. changing as well i mean that, that's one of the harder parts about keeping up with science education that it's always there's something new yeah and that's he, what makes he, it awesome he, he... Yeah, here is here is one thing though. Like I think one thing you said is super important. You're a science teacher and you are like saying that you don't know that many scientists. So I think that's a problem. I think that's that's a societal problem. That's yeah. that's a problem that's built in the system. Right. And that's me as a science teacher. Imagine the general public as you mentioned, you know, what is the front face of of science? You know, and, right. and I think, you know, and people have those ideas about who a scientist is, you know, and that's why I went through a whole thing. And scientists don't know enough teachers. That's that's true as well. That's um, true. It, we, we all have the thing where it's like it goes up down to the, the higher ed. People are like, what are they doing in the high school? The high school teachers are like, what are they teaching down in the middle school? The middle school teachers are like, what are they doing in the elementary school? <laughs> and the elementary teachers are like, what are they doing with these kids at home? <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> Turtles all the way down. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it goes that way. And I think the, the, that's that's the, the like what, what Constable says is true. It's like yep. it's both ways. But it's, I think, first of all, we need to change how science is being done today. We have mm -hmm. to main, we have the means to change it. We have, we can open the doors of science without like making huge changes it's it's not that hard like putting a camera in the lab or in in your facility that you can stream your activities to general public is not that hard mm -hmm. and people will see you as a person because when, pe when people are doing experiments they are doing experiments as people. They're not doing experiments as robots. And if, if people can mm -hmm. see people doing experiments and when they, when yep. they're doing experiments, like I, I'm like, I was really busy doing my experiments. I never thought about streaming them. Like, I, I'll be honest. Like, I wish I thought about it. I wish <laughs> better. like, I, like seriously, I wish I thought about it. I wish I streamed them. Because I had the time when I'm doing something, when I'm like creating something, it, let's say I'm building a, a structure to do some experiment, right? But when I'm building the structure, I can talk at the same time because that's what we do. We, we talk with our friends when we are do, building stuff. So it's not, it's not like something extraordinary for me. It's not extra work. And that would be like much better to do stuff and like connect with people. So that would be a way to reach out to the, 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 the other people and like the, the teachers who are interested in 
this kind of stuff can connect with you. Like we, the, what I'm trying to say is we have all the technology. We have all the means to build these into our systems like seamlessly. It's not that hard. It's just we have to take the take the take the initiative and build them right now. Mm -hmm. So and I, I really think we should completely like make this like reachable with the wide community as much as possible. Yep. Agreed. And and I do like Reed and Rap's quote from uh Carl Sagan. Um I was reminded of that quote just uh I think it was like a few weeks ago i actually i read cosmos every year now that's uh, one of the things i just started doing i read it once a year but um uh, yeah. that's just a little side note yeah i yeah i i I, de I definitely agree with that and it's it like it's one of the, one of the quotes that has you know like influenced me a lot like mm -hmm. that that's that's really really important <clears throat> yep Oof. Yep, and uh, we are very happy for our new TKF members to help promote that Thank continued you. science. Um, and it'll be good. Um, we are going to finish up here because I do have to wake up and teach eighth graders first thing in the morning. Uh, Thirteen-year-olds are not I, forgiving. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm also <laughs> traveling to Philadelphia to teach. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Um, and so last, uh, any, uh, you got it. Someone had to post it something, um, last sets of questions here. Yeah. If, if anyone has some, who's, who's someone posted, what was this? Oh, I guess just how reminds me of how people. Okay. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, there you go. Okay, so M M Michael has one question that I can, you know, okay. make a comment real quick. The the mammoth question. Woo. Um, so M Michael, it's I like we couldn't bring back mammoth as a mammoth, right? Like that's that wouldn't be possible. Uh, but there there is an attempt on. That and as far as I believe, they're trying to create this mammoth, uh, elephant, you know, like hybrid creature to release in the the Siberian Arctic or something, and then like I don't know what will happen. So that's that's that there there is there there is a project going on on that front. So it's the mammoth wouldn't be able to survive today, that's for sure. But like the the genes of mammoth, maybe we don't know. Yep. Right. See you, Philip. And uh, thank you for the sub read and wrap. I appreciate that. The uh, events obviously not working. I will also add. Um, by November, I'm going to try to get my uh, my extra life uh, charity funded. So if anyone would like to help with uh, supporting Extra Life in children's hospitals, that is appreciated. Um, but no need. But I just want to give that shout out before uh, we finish up. Um, the next chat I have is uh, going to be in a few weeks. And I'm going to have uh, Nick from Mindfulness will be on on October 13th. And uh, we're going to be talking about a lot about mindfulness in the classroom, at, particularly as it uh, pertains to uh, autism. Uh, he, of course, has a unique uh, perspective as the uh, as a person in high school. So that will be a, uh, a very good chat. And on the 27th, uh, Kristen Lear, who uh, is a bat scientist, will be here for a special Halloween chat about that's, bats. That's nice. And it's also Bat Week, in case you didn't know. So that will be a, a really cool uh, uh, chat. So Halloween theme and everything. Well, mm -hmm. I'm really excited. Uh, so that's what's coming up in October. It's hard to believe it's October already. Oh, my gosh. 
Oh yeah. Oof. It goes by so fast. Right. I feel like I just started the school year. I know. So. I know. Yep. Yep. Please hang out. We will raid someone here. We'll we'll yeah. we'll pay it forward. And we don't do hate raids. We do love raids from science streams. Uh. Yeah. Th thanks for everyone for coming in. You yeah. Know, thank you so much. It's been stuff. wonderful. I learned a lot. You learned a lot. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot too. So, and I'm thinking right now we'll probably rate Megalomorph is streaming. So I just don't know how nice. long he's been streaming for. So I don't want to get there and then have him like ditch. <laughs> Cause that happens all the time. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks for the gift subs. Awesome. We don't we don't do the trivia quiz. No, Uncle Bill. It's one of the things I had to stop doing the trivia just because, um, one, it's a shorter stream. Two, it just takes a lot of time. That I don't have. Um, that's why I'm doing every other week, and I don't do the trivia questions because it just um, I don't have the I I ain't got time for that. <laughs> uh, I barely have time to get down. So, but it is one of the things I I want to do again, but. Uh, it's it's very uh it can be very stressful trying to get everything done for uh for school um i was cutting stuff out for an activity right before i came down here uh, on physical and chemical properties but <laughs> <laughs> classic eighth grade science stuff you guys probably remember that from your school if you're here in the states at least Whew. all right um Sweet stuff. Hope the great ads are kind to you today. Uh, Thank you, Scott. It was it was great there too. To be oh, here. it's great to be here. Yeah, great having you. Um, we'll we'll have you on as a, a repeat guest for sure. Um, just like want to have Natty on again yeah, at some sure. point. And uh, and now now I'm curious about have a uh, constable to have a chat as well. Um, everyone's always welcome. It's always fun and a, a good time. So yeah. let's see. We'll raid. So make sure you hang out for make a little more for a little bit. Learn some math. <laughs> Who's on? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a hype train. Yeah. Woohoo. All right. Let's send it on. It was great. Thank you so much. Hey, it, it was wonderful. Ooh, yeah. We've got a Thank raid. you so much. And it was, a, a decent like, I really enjoyed this. <laughs>